At this time, I'd like to introduce our uh, second speaker, uh, Dr. Philip Mitchell. Uh, Mr. Mitchell is a professor of social studies at Colorado Christian University. He has been at the university five years. Previously, he taught history at the conservative University of UC Boulder. I'm interested to hear how he did that for 25 years. Dr. Mitchell has appeared on the O'Reilly Factor, MSNBC, ABC, and numerous syndicated talk radio programs. He's also been featured in a number of national magazines and online columns dealing with the issue of discrimination in higher education. Dr. Mitchell has been married to Nancy for 37 years. They have a multiracial family of nine children. He currently serves as the pastor of the Beecher Island Congregation, Yuma County, Colorado. Help me welcome Dr. Phil Mitchell. Uh, the, the topic, how the left is trying to destroy America, is really broad. And when I looked at it last night, Tom, uh, I had, uh, I just saw the dovetail what I'm going to say into it. Because it's a gigantic topic. Uh, we all know the, the political left is, uh, it, it is very powerful, far more powerful than the numbers would dictate. Uh, they are virtually all taxpayer funded, uh, almost all leftists, every leftist I know, and I know a bunch. Uh, I taught at uh, Boulder for 25 years. He said, how on earth did you do it? It was the providence of God. I am, uh, it's a, an Easter type miracle. Uh, that I was able to teach there that long. But uh, my feeling is that God wanted me there. And so I was there for 25 years, and now I've spent five years at Colorado Christian University, which is truly Christian and truly conservative. It's really a new place to be. And I finally have academic freedom. I finally have the freedom to say that one in, in class. Uh, and I didn't for a long time. But you have to understand something about the political left. And the easiest way to understand them, uh, when I was a seminary student 40 years ago, we studied cults, kind of weird marginal religions. That's what the left is. They are a religious cult. And I'm, I'm not being facetious, I'm being serious. If you go through and do a kind of a taxonomy on what a cult is like, that's what the left is like. Uh, they're right, everybody else is wrong. They have secret knowledge of truth. Uh, they need to tell everybody what to believe. They have to destroy other points of view. What does it say about a position whose number one tactic in dealing with the opposition is to silence them? What does that say? Now, there's a theological reason why they're that way, and I'll give it to you. The left actually originally comes from a very devout, wonderful Christian concept. It's found in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 27, where it says, Man was created in the image of God. Male and female created he them. One of the fundamental tenets of Christianity, and we're the only religion that's held it, is that all human beings have value. All human beings have worth. Now what cults do is they take something that's true and distort it. It's always a, very much a cultic characteristic. They take something that's true and, dis, and distort it. So what they've done is they've taken this truism that all human beings have value and they've turned it instead into all human beings must be equal and then they've gone from that all human beings must be economically equal and they move from that. See, see how they're morphing, they're devolving here? And then they go from all human beings must be equal to if you're rich... You're evil and we hate you. Unless, of course, it's us. Then it's all right. If it's Jared Polis or Tom Hill and we're rich. Remember Jared Polis wrote in the Denver Post after Citizens United. He said, I have a right to spend all my all money I want on politics. You don't. I don't know if any of you read that column or not. I wrote a response to it in the Centennial Block. I, and that's, that's the left-wing position. Now, the way they carry out, the, one of the primary ways they carry out that vision is by indoctrinating children. And the reason they have to do it that way is they do not have children of their own. I thought it was very interesting. I have nine children. And when I would mention that to people at Boulder, uh, they would have a stroke. It's a really easy way to kill littles. <laughs> <laughs> to tell them how many children you have. Uh, I, I, You're a threat to the planet! I just can't believe you did that. And that's just my wife's fault. And you know, people ask me, how many children do you have? Well, when I left home this morning, it was nine. But my wife collects them, so you never know. <laughs> but they have to control, and they do control education. They control it. Now, in my car, you'll have to trust me on this, 
I have an article. Stanley Rothman is a fine researcher at Amherst, and he's done this kind of research for years. There's a zillion studies on this. It's like the study that shows that the sun comes up in the east. And this study shows that the left dominates academia. And he went through and studied 1,700 college professors around America. And you'll be shocked to know that in, of the 1,700 college professors uh, he studied, in English literature, 2% were Republicans. In sociology, 0% were Republicans. In political science, 4% were Republicans. And at Boulder, it's worse than that. And it's worse than you think. Because the Democrats at CU are not ordinary Democrats. They are mad at Obama because he's too conservative. I wish I was making that up. They have fallen off the edge of the earth to the left. And so they are, they're more extreme than you think. And they control higher education. They control it for several reasons. They control it because in the 60s, they decided that that was the best strategy for influencing America. And they want to influence it. And they control it because of the nature of higher education. The great enemy of academic freedom in America is the tenure process. Getting tenure was supposed to guarantee academic it is the enemy of academic freedom because they control the tenure process. And believe you me, none but orthodox leftists escape that. Can escape that. You have no heterogeneity of thinking in the academic community at all. They all agree on everything, and really, they are. Obama is very, very normal in their view. And I have mentioned to my students many times at CCU, what we have right now is government by a college professor. I used to think, what would it be like if the faculty at CU ran our government? Well, now we have. <laughs> now you have. And I couldn't agree more with uh, Bill Buckley. He said he would rather be governed by the first 500 names in the Boston phone book than the faculty at Harvard. And he's absolutely right. Uh, Thomas Sowell said, Best, some things are so appallingly stupid, only intellectuals believe them. <laughs> Francis Fukuyama said the only Marxists left in the world are in North Korea and Harvard wow. they're the only ones left all, all of the Marxists in Colorado live in Boulder oh you get a snapping of them here there are other universities so you have a few others uh, but notice that to be a leftist you have to really be insulated from reality because the great enemy and I want to talk about that I don't want you to be without hope the great enemy of the left is reality. Now, I'm not only a conservative, and by the way, you ask, well, didn't you get into hot water at Boulder? I was in hot water all the time. All the time. Uh, and there was always a strong debate between liberals who felt it was all right for me to be there and leftists who felt like I should be fired because I wasn't preaching left-wing orthodoxy. And there was that there was a, that debate, and that debate went on every semester, went on all the time. Every time I went for renewal, I taught a lot of different programs in Boulder, and I got, I've been fired lots of times. <laughs> Left wing program directors would, would come in, find out who I was, and fire me. <clears throat> and that's their that's their idea. They do not believe in academic freedom. Obama doesn't believe. It. They believe in controlling the flow of information so they can cram ideas down people's throats. Now. I, I remember speaking to a group of legislators back a few years ago down at the Capitol, and uh, they were sort of in despair about the left-wing control of higher education. I said, now, gentlemen, gentlemen, don't be in despair, because how many of you can remember, how many of you are old enough to remember thinking communism will never die? Communism, how many of you are old enough to remember thinking Communism will never die. And then in William Buckley's great phrase, one morning God cleared his throat and it was dead. <laughs> now, the reason for hope, this is, this is Easter Sunday, and the left keeps thinking they have killed the Christian faith, that they have killed conservatism, and it keeps rising through the dead. And the reason that the left is not going to win is because they don't run the universe. God does. Amen. Now, that's one reason. Now, I'm very curious about how God is going to deal with the people who hate him in higher education. I'm curious about that. And I don't know the answer to that. All I know is that he will 
deal with them in his time. And there are numerous ways of going about it. I would make some suggestions to you of things that you could do personally. I want to, you know, you should be empowered. Number one, no legislature in America should ever vote again to give a dime to higher education. It should never be done. I told Greg Brophy this. Greg Brophy's attended my church many times. I haven't had Corey Gardner in church, but I've had his wife, so that's better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> higher education should not be funded. They don't, don't give to it. Don't give to higher education. Uh, there are only, I, I, somebody was talking about, well, Colorado Christian University is a conservative university. I said, yeah, you can name all five of them in America, can't you, in one minute. If you are a conservative parent, there is not a public university in the United States of America that represents your views. There's not a history department in the United States of America that represents your views. They're talking about having a chair of conservative studies in Boulder. That's like the political science department deciding that the Republican Party exists. This is astonishing to me. Half the people in Colorado voted for the Republican candidate last time, and you, you, we can't have one professor at CU. Uh, American Enterprise Institute did a study a few years ago. CU's many of their departments. The history department was Democratic 28 to 1, and one was too many. Now, that's the situation I'm in, in higher education. And the left used to be idealistic. Now they're motivated primarily by money. And that's what professors talk about in their private moments, is funding and budget, and how horrible it is that businessmen make more money than they do and on and on it goes. And so one of the things that needs to be done, legislators need to pull the plug on higher education. I, uh, there, nothing else will speak to the left more powerfully than that. I remember uh, meeting with Hank Brown, who uh, was president of the University of Colorado, and a former Republican senator in Colorado. He is a delightful human being. I, I love Hank. I love him personally. I've had dinner with him. He's just so enjoyable to talk to. But I told him, I said, Hank, when he was president of the CU, so Hank, the number one problem facing higher education is the staggering imbalance to the left on the part of the faculty. Let me put it to you differently. Ward Churchill is normal. No. Ward Churchill's no people think, oh, yeah, we'll get rid of Ward Churchill. There are 200 Ward Churchill's in Boulder. Seriously, who went marching around for Ward Hundreds of professors marching around to defend him. He was chairman, elected chairman of his department. By the way, there are many departments at the University of Colorado and every other public university that do not exist to study truth, to explore truth. They exist to promote a particular political ideology. And every department that ends in studies, women's studies, religious studies, black studies, uh, on, on American studies, on down the line, they all exist to promote a particular ideology. I told one of my liberal friends, I said, how would you feel if we established at the University of Colorado the Department of Protestant Evangelical Studies? And the stated purpose of the Protestant Evangelical Studies Department at CU is to persuade every student to receive Jesus Christ as personal Savior. How would you feel? How would you like to fund that? And of course... You know, his face changed color, you know, that kind of thing. And I told him, I said, that's exactly what you're expecting me to do. You're expecting me to fund religious organizations that are hostile toward me. You said you believed in the separation of church and state. No, you don't. What most universities are, are taxpayer-funded religion. That's what they are. And we dare say no less about that, because that is what their goal is. Now, since they don't have children of their own, they have to indoctrinate ours. And it's hard. Have any of you ever tried to tell an 18-year-old to do anything? Uh, it's pretty late in the game uh, to be doing that, isn't it? Uh, pretty hard to do. And so professors are very, very angry. I remember a woman in a faculty meeting say, we need, it's her exact words, a psychology professor, we need to replace the values these kids got from their children. We need to replace those values. And my comment was, with what? You have no values. You have no values to replace them. Needless to say, I was not always real popular in faculty meetings. Uh, but th that, is, that is their goal. I remember George Moore, English professor at the University of Colorado, say, I need to go into my classroom today and replace his religious views with Marxism. <laughs> exactly what he said. Now, he was a very outspoken atheist. 
One year I told George we were having our Christmas party in our department, excuse me, our winter solstice celebration. <laughs> and I told George, I said, George, Merry Christmas, just in case. Merry Christmas and God bless you, just in case. You never know, George, you've got to cover all the possibilities here. And just in case there's a God, I told him, I said, George, one of the bad things about being an atheist is that if you're right, you won't be able to rub it in. But that was his goal. That was his goal. Now, the, there's good news about that in that his uh, he, he was a very obnoxious teacher, and I love it. I want leftist professors to be dreadful and obnoxious and pushy, and most of them are. And students resent them and hate it, and they just can hardly wait to get that over with so they can go to the basketball game, which is why they're there. Uh, and I understand that with students. People complain students aren't learning in college. My response to that is, thank God they're not learning. <laughs> I hope that none of it stays in their mind. I'm serious. The, the state of higher education today, the so-called liberal education is indeed, indeed that. Liberal leftist education. I hope kids, and kids plot all kinds of ways to avoid it. They have a gender and culture requirement. They have to take a gender, which is just left-wing indoctrination 101. And they try to replace it with things like every one student said, I can meet that requirement by taking Navajo dance. <laughs> Navajo dance. Uh, they're looking for ways to avoid that. They know how fundamentally dishonest it is, how immoral it is. Universities steal money from students, stick them in gigantic classes so that they can make money and do what they really want, which has nothing to do with students. That kind of corruption, friends, will come to an end. Almighty God will put an end to it at some point. I don't know when he will. Uh, I can view it either from here or eternity, but I do look forward to the day. All right, I'm at the 20-minute mark, uh, Tom. And I think, I doubt if anybody here will have any questions. Cheryl and Marnie agree with everything I said. <laughs> so they didn't breakfast, but. All right, let me, let me go ahead and entertain questions because I know you're going to have some. Yes. Mike, we need to have you, Mike. How do you do what you do without a teleprompter? <laughs> uh, you know, I, wonder, I wonder if the president uses a teleprompter at breakfast. Well, good morning, Michelle. <laughs> How are you? Pass the eggs, please. I just wonder. <laughs> and I'll tell you, the more you can get him off teleprompter, the better it is for the Republican <laughs> Okay, other questions? I have three teenagers. Could you name those five conservative colleges, please? <laughs> yes, I can. Uh, Colorado Christian University is your best choice here because it's truly conservative. Has John Andrews addressed this group? Okay, John Andrews, his office is about 50 feet from mine, uh, and uh, he is a heavy player. Uh, of course, our president is uh, former United States Senator William Armstrong, a very articulate and wonderful conservative. Uh, and uh, CCU, it's, it, CCU is pricey, like all private schools, no one pays the sticker price, so don't let that scare you. If you've got a kid in Colorado, that's your best choice. Unless they want to major in nuclear engineering or something, uh, that would be your best choice. Hillsdale is a very fine secular conservative college. Uh, you're familiar with that. Liberty Baptist University. Gives a very fine undergraduate uh, conservative education, but they're a long, long way from here. Most Christian colleges aren't. They are neither Christian or conservative. And I had someone ask me if I would want to send name one of the really tiny Christian colleges. It costs fifty thousand dollars a year to go there. Uh, I, they said, "Would you send your kid there?" I said, "I'd rather take the two hundred thousand dollars to send them there." and take it out in the middle of a football field and set it on fire before I would send my kid to that school. So what have I named? Three so far? Uh, anybody want to add to the list? What else would work? Grove City. Uh, yeah, Grove City in Pennsylvania, a very fine school. They don't take money from the feds. Yes, yeah. uh, but they're, boy, their numbers are really tiny. Uh, all of the CUs, all the university co the CU and CSU systems in Colorado are, are, are all off the edge of the earth to the left. All of them are. I've taught at CSU, I've taught at Mines, and of course I've taught a lot of time in Boulder. Uh, they're all, there's no difference between them. Really. The CSU is microscopically more conservative, maybe. It has a more conservative student body. 
But the faculty's not. The faculty is learning to French left. Yes? Given that the second, you're going to be at the mic. Given that we've had a very outstanding conservative as president of CU, that we have a nominally conservative uh, uh, chancellor, I guess, uh, and nothing has changed at the university, I can we have any hope except for the intercession of good Lord that things will ever change in our Colorado world. Now, my dad used to say, there's nothing wrong with Boulder, a match wouldn't cure. Uh, I was very I told him, after I told Hank Brown what the problem was at CU, he says, yeah, but what can you do? And I thought, you can go to war with these guys. You can go to war with these guys. You can start with an affirmative action program to, to hire conservative professors and cram them down the university's throat. I had a guy in the legislature ask me, well, where would you find conservatives like that? I said, well, the university didn't have any trouble finding an ethnic studies professor who had a master's degree from a degree mill in Illinois, Sangamon State University, and no publishing record, no nothing. They hired Ward Churchill to be on the faculty. They tenured him and made him department chair. Why can't you do that with a legitimate conservative? <laughs> there are thousands of those people in America. Put him in positions uh, at, at, at universities. And there's nothing the liberals need more than to have different voices in the faculty lounge. You will be perpetually immature if all you ever hear is your own point. We are far more familiar with them than they are with us. But Hank Brown did nothing. He did nothing. And it just galled me. And I I got in his face myself about that. It really upset me. And Bruce Benson is doing nothing. And these people that are setting up a conservative chair at the University of Colorado, I've already told them what will happen. You endow a chair to see you in conservative studies. Within 10 years, it will be being taught by a liberal, and he'll be telling you how evil conservatives are. That's how universities work. You've got to blow up that system. Now, the tenure system looks to be imploding under the pressure of finances. May God hasten the day. I mean, seriously. It is just dreadful. What a Now, by the way, I need to distinguish social sciences, humanities with the true sciences, business engineering. Uh, the true sciences, business engineering are very different. They're very different. But you have to take a ton of this liberal arts garbage when you go to CU. And it's all... It isn't that your kids will be swayed by it. It's a waste of their time and money to listen to that nonsense. Why can't we have one person to see you who represents our point of view? Uh, yeah, Kendall, you want to pass the mic around? Oh, okay, go ahead. You've got the mic. If you've got the mic, you're on. So I was private citizens. My kids are grown. They're both registered Republicans, conservatives. That's great. But as private citizens, without kids in the system right now, what can we do to affect this? Well, I think, first of all, what you're doing here will have tremendous effect. Because ultimately, the left is taxpayer funded. The left is taxpayer funded. And when you squeeze what you're doing, where are we? Lower taxes, less government. That will kill the left. The, the left is your big government institution because they're your big government cult. Because that's how they're funded. First, do you know any people on the left who are not government funded? Now, they're almost well, maybe Pat Stryker, who's an heiress and rich. And, but again, she's insulated from economic reality. So is Jared Paulus and Tom Gill. They're insulated from uh, economic reality. And so squeezing, squeezing big government financially is the best way to get at the left. If they're thrown out into the real world, I remember a few years ago I was reading an, an article in the Denver Post, a column. And this man said, I tried to start a bed and breakfast in New Hampshire, and the government got in my way, and there were all these regulations, and it was so annoying and so irritating and so wrong. That wouldn't be that unusual a column, except it was written by George McGovern. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing will cure you of being on the left faster than being in the real world. The enemy of the left is reality. Mike, right here. Uh, is it possible for a student to take a non-orthodox curriculum at CU and get a good liberal arts education? Virtually impossible. It can be done. But you'd have, to, you'd have to go in with my knowledge of the faculty. Your best bet would be to find liberals who tolerate your existence. There are some wonderful liberal professors at Boulder who are open-minded. Yes, that is not a contradiction, an open-minded liberal. There are some. 
They're hard to find. Uh, they're getting rarer and rarer. Uh, and uh, so I would suggest virtually impossible. My recommendation for the kid would be to take your first two years at a local community college. A community college is much less liberal politically. Isn't that interesting? The further you go up on the prestige ladder, the more of the left you get. And so maybe get as much of your liberal arts out of the way that way. Uh, high school is more conservative, although it's to the left. It's more conservative than Boulder. Of course, everything on earth is. Uh, but do the two years there, and then major in mechanical engineering in Boulder. Then you'd be fine. Is there or could there be a movement within the conservative Christian colleges to offer an online presence so that kids that are at these liberal institutions could get some of their basics online to yes. get their in? Great suggestion. Do that. Uh, do everything you can to avoid exposing them to the gangsters that teach liberal arts at a place like Boulder. And I mean, it's, I have one anecdote after another. You cannot imagine how horrible it is. It's much worse than you think if you actually get to know those people as, as I have.